go to quiet. Let's see. Who's recording this? Only because I thought I saw a faint positive um, on a test yesterday. And um, I mean, my period is due in like two days now. And for it to be that faint, um, I, I think it may have just been like an end deadline or something, but I'll insert a picture of it and you can see for yourself. But I'm gonna take this and just see if today looks any different. If it doesn't, then most likely it was just an end deadline. Um, we have not been trying, um, and I can go into more detail about this later. But I'm just gonna take this test real quick because I'm wanting somebody else to like. <laughs> it's probably nothing, but I just wanted to do another test just to make sure. This can be so hard to open, jeez. <laughs> look at this um, because like when I saw that faint positive I know we haven't been trying but it kind of brought me some joy and I'm not nervous it's gonna be positive I'm nervous it's gonna be negative um, because after you see that positive you start like well what I thought was a faint positive you start like just kind of getting excited, you know, and, um, I don't know, if it's not darker today, then it's not in a line, or it isn't in that line, it's not positive. Um, I feel like by now, if, with my period starting in two days, I've always been able to test early, always, like, um, like with Olivia, I got a super noticeable positive at five days before period, but I think I ovulated a little bit different this month. Um, I don't know. Anyways, I'm gonna, I'm gonna check this out. It's so hard to tell. It's like, I feel like it's a little bit darker, but it's still not like, like, bam in your face positive, you know? Like, I just don't think I see enough of the, um, like the red dye to say it's positive. But you guys, I totally see a line there. Um, I don't know really what to think of it because with it being this light, this close to my period, I don't know if it's just because I ovulated late um, or Um, 
Oh, so let's wait. Um, I don't know if I ovulated late or just, um, I don't know. Or if this is like a, a chemical pregnancy and it's just not going to get any darker than this. But I'm going to go make some coffee and start my morning and I will get back to you guys later. Real quick, I forgot to show you guys the test because I was rushing because I heard someone flush the toilet upstairs and that made me nervous. But let me turn it around and show you real quick. You guys see that? super faint super faint but you guys can see it right I'll get a picture of it too I feel like sometimes if you take a picture you can see it better The next day is uh, 13 DPO and the day before my period is due. You guys saw the test yesterday, it was super faint, but it's noticeably there. So we'll see what today says. I'm a little nervous. Um, yeah, we'll see what today says. And if it's not any darker than I just, I think it's either a chemical pregnancy or, um, I don't really know, <laughs> uh, and then line, but the other test, the last two tests have picked up something, so if it just doesn't get any darker, then I'm just going to say it's a chemical pregnancy or, a, or I'm just seeing things, I don't know, <laughs> but all right, let's see if I can get this test open easier today. I'm just gonna lay it flat down like I did yesterday. See, it's flipped upside down, and now I'm gonna set a timer for three minutes and I'll be back. All right, three minutes is up. Oh my gosh, I'm so nervous. I didn't think I would be this nervous. Um, this one is yesterday's. Um, I already showed you guys, but I'll show you again. I don't know if you can pick it up this way. super faint but noticeably there and oh, I'm just so nervous to check this test my heart's like pounding like I'm nervous because I want it to be darker I want it to have some actual noticeable red dye so that I can stop playing this game of am I or am I not Okay, I'm gonna check it. Still down. Oh my god, he's burning. <laughs> wow. Unfortunately, it looks a lot like yesterday. I can still see a noticeable line there, but there's not a lot of red dye. Nothing that says you're pregnant is positive, so. Um. I think maybe it was a 
a chemical pregnancy. Um, like it was kind of starting, built just a little bit of HCG and then it's just done. Very disappointing. But I'll flip the camera around and show you guys because I don't think um, it'll be real visible. Okay. See, you can see it a little bit, but nothing that really says yeah, you're pregnant, you know, not this late in the game. See it? You can see that line. Yeah, the day before my period's supposed to start, I'm sure it, it would be much more noticeable than that. So that's a little disappointing, but it just is what it is. It So it's a little bit later um, and I dropped the kids off at school and I like didn't even get ready this morning as you can see. Anyways, dropped the kids off at school. I hung out with Olivia for a little bit and I just laid her down for a nap. But I did have one more test. I know the test this morning was basically negative. Um, there is a faint line that I can see in person but it's not anything like super noticeable it's not like it was yesterday there was definitely something there yesterday i can still see it on the test now and um it even looks like there's like some like the red dye on it now so um like j but just a little bit like it's a pink pinkish like tint to it that i can see um anyways i have one like blue dye test it's just like one of the Kroger ones. And I know these aren't very trustworthy, but they've predicted all my pregnancies before first response, like around the same time as first response, but like they've always been darker on the blue dye test. But anyways, I'm pretty sure this is gonna be negative. I'm about 99.9% sure this will be negative, especially cause my pee is a little like, diluted right now too. And considering with first morning urine this morning, there wasn't hardly anything on the first response. But I do have a doctor's appointment today um, and I just want to get one more test out of the way. I know it seems pretty pointless, but I'm just gonna do it. I gotta say, this whole mess has really messed with my head. And I will sit down after this and explain to you guys why I started testing in the first place. Because like I said, we have not been trying. My husband is not ready for another one. Um, I'm pretty open to, if he's ready, I'm ready. Like, I'm ready for it. But he is, however not, but he is well aware that um, these things can happen. And he wouldn't be mad if it did. Just, he doesn't want to plan for it. But anyways, there's... Nothing on the test. I'm gonna dip it now. Okay. Now these usually take a little bit longer to start going across. starting to go across. I'm going to put it face down like I did my other ones and I'm going to set a timer for five minutes. I feel like the blue dyes take a little bit longer to like process than the first response does. So I'm going to put it for five minutes and I'll be back. All right so the five minute timer just went. I'm not really nervous this time because I 
can already predict it's probably going to be negative. I don't even know why I'm doing this. I guess I'm just crazy. Which, if any of my family sees this, they're going to think I'm crazy no matter what. <laughs> Except for my sister. She's the one that I've been able to talk to through all this. She has similar experience and feels a lot of the same ways I do. Anyways. Um, okay. I'm going to look at this test. I think I'm going to feel more disappointment. But... Here we go. Still face down. Oh yeah. Yeah, it's pretty negative. I mean, the same with like every blue dye test. Not every time I've taken a blue dye test I see it, but it's kind of often. I see like that thin line of like dye, but yeah, no, this isn't like, not the kind of positive I was hoping for the day before, the day before my period. So like, it's still really, really, really faint. Like yesterday I took a blue dye test as well as the first response. And you can see, clearly see the blue dye, um, just the thin line, and this one feels even lighter than that. So I'll just call it a negative. Um, I think it was a pregnancy starting and just wasn't viable. Um, I hear that that happens a lot in women. Um, I've said chemical pregnancy to like a doctor before and they looked at me like I was crazy, but then I see it all over YouTube. So I don't really know. Um, basically just a pregnancy that fails or doesn't, it's not like a viable pregnancy. Like it ends before five weeks. I hear that it's common. Like it happens to women all the time, but if you don't early test, then you don't even know it happened because you'll get your period regularly or it might even be delayed. Um, like a month or two, or a month, a month or two, I meant a day or two. Um, but yeah, such a bummer. Like I can show it to you guys, but you're not going to see a dang thing. It's just way, way too faint. And you know, I'll do my regular showing you this way. <sighs> I wish my husband was ready to try. Like, I know we probably like aren't in the best situation right now. I, like we do okay. We've got our own house, but it is very small. And with our family of five, we are growing out of it. So that's like the biggest thing right now. But I think my husband wants to be a little bit more financially stable. Like, we're doing okay. We're not, like, poor or struggling. We are just, like, just getting by. So, I think he wants to, you know, which is, like, the logical thing to do. But I don't always think logically. You know, I'm going to be honest. Sometimes I let my wants go ahead of, you know, what should actually happen like waiting but you know the way I see it is James and Avery are two years apart and Olivia and Avery are well they're a little bit more they're about three yeah they're about three years apart a little over three years. Avery's five. Olivia is getting ready to turn two. Um, yeah, I think Avery had just turned. I know she was three when I got pregnant. Anyways, I'm not going to do math in my head. And I'm not going to ramble on because there's no point. Um, I am going to have a sit down in a minute and just let you guys know why I started testing in the first place. But let me turn this around so you can see it from this point of view. All right, so I don't know if you'll even be able to see it from this angle either. Yeah, 
you know, you can't see it on camera. I mean, maybe you can a little bit. I don't know. That's only if you look like really closely. A lot of people just see this and say, no, that's mostly negative. Let's just call it a negative. So that's what I should be doing right now. Stop overanalyzing everything and um, just accept it for what it is. So, oh, sorry, that got blurry. Yeah, negative. Okay, here's a little bit different lighting. So, this is the one from yesterday. Let's see. So, that one you can noticeably see. I know I can. It's got an actual line there. And that was yesterday morning. And then I took this one a little bit later in the day. And you can see that one a little bit more. And then here's the one from this morning where you can't see like anything at all, really. Like I, I know that I can, but um, there you can see it a little bit but it's not like as prominent as yesterday and if this was a viable pregnancy this would be much darker than yesterday's so and then this is the one that I just took so you can see that thin 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 little blue line just a tiny bit but like I said day before my period and with yesterday's tests looking the way that they did those would be much darker so it just is what it is. It's not the right timing and I need to accept it. Okay, so I'm just gonna sit down and talk with you guys just for a few minutes. I'm gonna try and keep it at just a few minutes of why I started testing in the first place. So um, I do take ovulation tests and um, I did ovulate a couple days later than my app had told me that I was going to, but I knew that I was ovulating, but me and my husband were active that night anyway. Um, but we're always careful. Like we take precautions. It's not like when we're trying, if you know what I mean. And so, I mean, the thought was at the back of my head that like that could have potentially happened, but like, I, we just kind of think of it as if it happens, then it was God's timing. Um, but we're not going to try, you know, and so that's basically what happened. And so the thought was at the back of my head that it could have happened. But like I said, we were still kind of careful. So I didn't really know. But then when the symptoms kind of started rolling around, then I was like, oh, well, this could have, this could have happened. That's kind of why I started testing. So the first symptom that I noticed was horrible headaches. I would wake up in the morning with headaches, almost like a hangover and I don't drink. And so, um, like I have in the past, that's how I know that like a hangover headache, but you know what I mean? So like, I don't drink on a regular basis. And so that's not what it was, but I was waking up with these horrible headaches, but headaches really wasn't like a standout symptom to me but then my boobs started hurting and my boobs don't hurt before my periods. They haven't since I started having kids, which was about eight years ago was the last time that my boobs actually hurt before a period. So I kind of noticed my boobs were hurting and then they felt kind of heavy. And then like the night, so at 11 DPO that night, they were like really hurting, like kind of throbbing, hurting. And so like, I was walking down the stairs like this because <laughs> they just would hurt. So that was the first one, this first symptom that I was like, oh, this could possibly be, you know? Um, and then I was like kind of getting headaches. Oh, no, 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 I'm sorry, dizzy spells. I already said the headaches. I would get dizzy spells, but getting dizzy spells isn't like out of the norm for me. I, I do get dizzy spells. So, um, 
that's why I don't really like the symptom spot because symptoms can mean so many different things. And in case you're wondering why I'm kind of turned, the window's open and it leaves a glare on my glasses and it bothers me. So I'm kind of turning a little bit. But anyways, um, yeah. So those few symptoms. And then the last symptom that I had was cramping. So it's for me, I've been pregnant four times. So I can differentiate the difference between pregnancy cramps or implantation cramps or whatever they're called and period cramps. So my cramps that I get whenever I'm pregnant are almost like a, a muscle pinching, muscle pinching cramp, like against my hip bones kind of, like closer to my hip bones, not so much centered, um, kind of like, a Charlie horse in a, in a way. That's like the best way I can put it. And that has happened to me, um, with all my pregnancies. So to me, when I started feeling that, then I was like, okay, I need to test. Well, at 11 DPO, which I told you guys, I had seen a very faint line, but that did not scream pregnant to me because first response does get those like gray lines and so I was like okay well it could just be that so when I took that test yesterday at 12 DPO that was like the only really noticeable positive to me so it's not like there wasn't a ton of red dye I still wasn't saying yes I'm pregnant but it was definitely darker than 11 DPO and um and that stood out to me and, um, but the fact that it was so close to my period uh, and it was still really light, I already had it in my head that if this is, if I am in fact pregnant, this is not a viable pregnancy. I just know, I've always been an early tester with my pregnancies, um, except for James. He was my first one and when you're pregnant with your first one, you don't really know, you just know to test closer to when your period is due. So I tested the day my period was due with James and it was screaming positive. But with Avery, I didn't really keep track of my um, like ovulation and all that. So I have no idea how many DPO I was and that was um, over five years ago. So I really don't remember how far away I was to my period either. I did not keep track on an app back then. So, I just had a feeling and I tested, but it was still really early because it was a very faint um, positive on a blue dye test, but it was definitely a positive. And it took a couple days to actually get like a really dark positive. And then with Olivia, I tested five days before my period was due. And then I did have a pregnancy about four to six months after Avery was born. Um, it was definitely not planned. And, um, but I had just gotten this weird feeling that I was pregnant. I don't think I even had any symptoms, but it was like we were watching TV one night and the thought just like came over me like, I think I might be pregnant. I, it was like the weirdest thing. It just like came over me one night and I didn't even tell Josh. I just went and bought a test the next day and um, it was a very faint positive, about the same kind of positive I got with eight, when I found out I was pregnant with Avery. So, and then I didn't really keep track of things either. So I don't know, I, I don't remember how close I was to my period. I don't remember DPO, I didn't keep track of ovulation. Whenever, and I don't want to sound insensitive to people that have to actually like really try to get pregnant, but whenever me and my husband have decided to get pregnant, we just decide and throughout that cycle, we just go for it. And then I always end up pregnant. So um, I never did keep track of ovulation and all that until I started using it to prevent pregnancy. Um, so we've been using natural family planning since Olivia was born. I have tried um, the pill uh, and it just, I have a really bad reaction with it. I always forget it and like I'm horrible with it. So then I tried the um, IUD and 
about six months into it, got pelvic inflammatory disease from it. So I got that taken out. It just was like the most horrible pain. So um, I just don't react well with birth control. I didn't want to try and figure out another one to use. So I started using natural family planning, which is what um, some of my other friends have used and it was successful. Um, I will admit that this month and last month I've been lazy with it, but um, you know, I need to get back onto it so situations like this don't happen um, where I'm just guessing and this and that. But um, when I, in fact, I do get pregnant again, um, it will be planned. My husband will be happy about it and we'll, we're going to be in a better place. So anyways, I'm already pushing almost nine minutes here, um, longer than I wanted to, but I just wanted to let you guys know why I started testing in the first place. And I am sad. Um, you know, when you see that faint positive, you do kind of get this excited feeling. And um, I did allow myself to get excited, even though knowing in the back of my head, it probably wasn't going to stick, um, which as you can see from the test today, it did not. Um, so it just is what it is. I know that there was something there and I know my body and I know that, um, I was only pregnant for a little while, but I know that I was. And um, yeah, that's just it. And my heart goes out to any of you other ladies out there that are trying to get pregnant and are going through this or um, are like me and not trying, but still going through it. It sucks, um, especially if you already have children and you've been through pregnancy, it is sad. But um, I will get over it. Um, I am sad. I'm disappointed, but I know that it just wasn't in God's plan for it to happen right now. So, um, yeah, it is at 10 minutes now. I don't want to drag this on any longer. I know that can get boring. So thank you all for watching this video. Um, feel free to leave me a comment down below, subscribe to my channel so you don't miss when we actually do start trying, um, which I'm hoping will be in the near future. And um, if you just like homemaking, mom life, cleaning, cooking content, you're in the right place. So um, anyways, I will see you guys in my next video and I hope you stick around.